the Wanderer slash Karambush, the second playable Faturi Harbinger. My King Tartaglia has been thrown off his throne of the only playable Faturi Harbinger, because now you can play the Wanderer slash Karambush. He is Animo and not Electro, and he's got a very interesting kit. Being an absolute main DPS, being on your screen for 90-95% to of the time, and really demanding a lot of support and a lot of shielding and buffs to bring out his true power. So how do you build the one and only Fallen God Scaramouche? Well, I will tell you that within this video, so let's go. So first of all, his weapons. Now he is a Catalyst, a Nemo main DPS that uses his normal attack very frequently. For this reason, his signature Catalyst is of course the best choice that you have. But what is next to that? Well, all of the damage 5 star catalysts are a good option on him. But let's rank them. I think Memory of Dust is really good on Skarmouche. Because you are constantly shielded as you really need a shield to play Skarmouche properly. I'd say Memory of Dust gains a lot more value. Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds is great on him. And so is Kagura's Variety. Simply because they give a lot of crit rate and crit damage. And just increase your damage by a ton. The Skyward Atlas is also a good option. But if you have to choose between Lost Prayer, Kagura's and Memory of Dust. And then Skyward Atlas. I would put Skyward Atlas a little bit lower. But it is still a great 5 star option. The not so good 5 star options are. A Thousand Floating Dreams and Everlasting Moonglow. As they're really not damage options. Now for your 4 stars. First of all, for limited edition 4 star weapons, we have the Dodogo Tails and the Old Swan Eye. Both of these weapons are pretty good on Skaramouche, and if you have one of these, I would recommend using them on them. Especially the Dodogo Tails, as it works really well with them. If you do not have any of these limited weapons, the Witsit is probably the best gacha weapon. The Witsit is a really good gacha weapon, it gives you crit damage, and he can use all of the stat rolls, especially the attack and elemental damage increase. And all in all, Skaramouche is just able to profit a lot off of this weapon. But let's say you do not have any catalysts and you need to craft one. Well, you have two options here, I would say. Your first option is the Black Cliff A-Gate, which you can get from the shop. Your second option is the Frostbearer. The Frostbearer is craftable from Dragon Spine, and it gives you attack percent and also makes you do a little bit extra damage whenever you're hitting opponents with some icicles. So if you're completely free to play, I would recommend the Frostbearer if you do not have any other options. So now, what artifact sets should you go on him? Well, first of all, his new set that came out with Skaramouche is the best in slot. Just make sure to use the charge attack if you have the 4P set to proc the effect before you start normal attacking. Some other good options are Vermilion Her After, which is quite decent. The Echoes of an Offering, which is even better on Skaramouche. And Shimanawa's... Reminiscence, which is actually quite good on Skaramouche, because you are able to use some energy to empower your normal attacks. And your elemental burst is great, but not that important. So using a good Shimanawa's Reminiscence set is a very good option. Next to that, you have the option to go for any two set piece, which gives you two piece attack or two piece anemo damage, and just balance your substats like that. Your final option is four piece Viridescent Veneer, which Mostly is there to enable your support. So let's say you're playing a big off-field DPS team like Beidou, Fischl, Zincho, that kind of stuff. You can really help your off-field DPS out by going 4-piece VV and stripping the resistances of the enemies as this is very OP. And you will still do very noticeable damage on Skaramouche but your off-field DPSs will get a massive buff from them. So, what do I recommend? You can either farm for his best in slot set and get Hopefully some good artifacts reasonably quick. If not, I would go for 4 piece Shimanawa's Reminiscence. As you can farm Emblem of the Seventh Fate at the same time. Which is one of the best artifact sets in the game. And works on so many characters. Or you go for 2 piece Glad, 2 piece VV or 2 piece Shimanawa, 2 piece Glad etc. And then finally, if you really want to be a resin efficient. You could farm for a different set. And use the artifact strong box to craft Veridescent for nearer pieces. And gear him with that. So that you don't have to spend a lot of resin on his specific artifacts. And you can always farm for his artifacts later. And put them on 4 piece VV now. Or 2 piece VV, 2 piece glad. Something amongst those lines. So see what your resin economy allows. And then act appropriately on the artifact. The artifact stats that you want is a Nemo damage percent. Attack percent. And either crit rate or crit damage. And your stat priority is crit rate, crit damage first. Then attack percent. Then energy recharge. And then Elemental Mastery. 
The other stats are not as relevant. For his talents, you need to level all of them at an equal rate as all three of them are incredibly important. But if you have to crown one of them, I would either crown his elemental skill or his normal attacks. Personally, I think his normal attacks are probably the best to crown. And then finally for his constellations. Well, I would personally recommend you pull for his constellations before you would pull for his web. Because his constellations are quite strong. Does he need constellations to be good? No. But his first constellation is really, really strong. Giving him some attack speed and some more damage. And his second constellation can seriously increase your Scaramouche's damage. But honestly, I would either go for C1 and stop and also get some Faruzan constellations on the way. Or just not get any constellations on Scaramouche. As I think the teams that he enables are strong enough that you do not need any constellations on him. But of course, if you want to go wild, his C6 is incredibly strong. And you can absolutely destroy anything with it. Now for Scaramouche's teams. Well, his teams are very very important as his passive allows him to gain a massive damage bonus from his teammates and also you really need some good supports as they deal a lot of off-field damage and also I think having a shield is a must. So let's go over some of the teams that I have played Scaramouche with. So the main important thing about a Scaramouche team is that you have someone to shield him as a shield is really helpful while you are hovering in the air. And then you either want another character to group up the enemies or just a good amount of AoE damage and a good amount of off-field damage. This team that I have played with Zhang Ling for off-field damage, Kazuha for also off-field damage and grouping up the enemies and Diona for both a shield, heal and a cryo appliance which gives Karamush a crit buff has been working really really well. Another team that I have played is Karamush with Faruzan and then Zhang Ling and Bennett together. You don't have a shield here unfortunately so it's a bit enemy dependent. But Faruzan gives you a massive damage buff, while Zhang Ling just does a ton of damage off-field and Bennett also gives you a big buff. And you have Animo and Pyro Resonance here. You can also play a Taser team with Fischl and Beto. They deal amazing off-field electro damage and your Scaramouche can enable this through his great basic attacks. And then there's Diona who is able to shield you and heal you at the same time which is quite convenient definitely in these kind of teams. Another team that I could suggest is a Wanderer centric team where you play Wanderer, Paruzan, Toma, Bennett. Instead of Shangling you go Toma here, you get a shield in this case but all the damage is for your Wanderer to deal. He does turn into a Firebender with Toma's element the burst. But you can also go for a Geo alternative team where you go Wanderer, Faruzan, Albedo, Zhongli. You can even swap out Faruzan. For someone like Zhang Ling or someone like Fischl if you'd like some more elemental reactions. The options here are endless. There is so much creativity that you can have with teams. There are so many different supports that work with him. So what I would recommend you to do is look at your shielder supports that you have. Someone like Diona, someone like Toma. See who is the best fit for your Wanderer and who fits your playstyle the best. If you're very good at dodging, you might not even need a shield. And then craft a team around it. My Zhang Ling is built amazingly strong and that's why I slot her in with Wanderer a lot. But you can also slot someone in like Fischl or like Beidou or Jin Cho or something amongst those types. So just figure out what is best for yours and make sure to bring a shielder if you need him. Because it's really nice to have one. So how do you play the Wanderer? Well after you have cast your shield and all your off-field DPS. You swap to him, you press E and you start hovering in the air. With his signature artifact set you first shoot out a charge attack. And after that you have a couple of choices. One, you go for three left mouse buttons just basically doing his whole combo attack. Especially the third one as it does a lot of damage. And then do a charged attack and repeat. Another option is you can literally just spam your charged attack. As it goes so fast you can just spam your charged attack constantly if that is more convenient. And you want some more AoE. If you need AoE do that. You can also dash for free and occasionally get a buff that does this for you. Now it's very hard to notice this. But your Scaramouche summons a sort of logo inside of him that shows you, oh wow, a free dash. And you also get an audio cue. So I would recommend looking out for this. And I would not recommend dashing except if you have this for free. Or if you need to dodge a incoming skill shot as you clearly don't want to get hit, right? Next to that. If you are fighting in the air and you are out of the air, I would recommend only elemental bursting at the end of your combo. Because you don't want to elemental burst and waste half of your skill because it ends your elemental skill once you burst. So elemental burst towards the end and don't worry too much about elemental bursting. You can even do another rotation and do your elemental burst only once every two rotations. This really depends on your energy recharge and your teams. But 
Don't worry too much about elemental bursting too soon, as this could ruin your combos. Next to that, if you are playing Wanderer, I would recommend to try and move around a little bit, to try and group up the enemies so that you can hit them, as you are lacking a little bit of AoE, and you want the enemies to be as close as possible. So study enemy patterns and try and get them as close and as grouped as possible. So to conclude, what do I think of the Wanderer? Well, I think he's a great character and I think with this build you will able to achieve absolute god status. Like he was always wandering for. So, do you want to make your Wanderer a god? Do you want to give him what he has sought after for these hundred thousands of years? These absolute powers? Well, then follow this build guide, try him out in your bestie. And I wish you the best of luck. If you enjoyed this guide and this was helpful, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos because I try to put a lot of effort in and I hopefully help. Thanks a lot again and I'll see you later.